cat welcome or welcome back to my channel i'm very excited for this video today i'm going to be paying a website to give me book recommendations and then reading them i've seen kayla from books and lala do this video gabby from gabby reads and a few other people i'll have their videos up here and linked in the description box if you want to check those out as well and they're so fun and i want to do it too i am so interested to see what books I'll be recommended. So let's just get into it. So setting up my profile now, first question is what my favorite genres are. I would say horror, uh, hard hitting contemporary, magical realism, and thrillers. I think that's mostly what I want to include. Is there anything you want to explore more of in your reading life? Hmm, this one is hard because it's so broad. Like, is it asking for specific tropes or themes, genres? I don't know. I think first I'm gonna say feminist, horror, or horror with with some social commentary because I've been really wanting some more of that lately. Um, I'm gonna say a hard hitting contemporary that will make me cry. I haven't cried while reading in a while and I want to. So I guess so far I'm just kind of expanding on the genres I said I like. And then I guess I'll include some tropes I like. So female villains, I'm kind of good with that for now. Maybe in a couple days I'll come back and edit a few of these things. What are the last few books you really loved? Betty Bites Back. Um, the last year Poets of the Sea I read like a year ago, but I would love to read some more books similar to that one. Uh, I would also like a book similar to They Never Learn. The Stars and the Blackness Between Them. Ooh, The Patient by Jasper DeWitt. I think that's good. That was like five books, I think. How should your bibliologist balance books that fit your current style with picks that branch out? I think I wanna keep it familiar. I feel like I have found the sort of books I enjoy reading, so I kinda of wanna stay in that space. Are you looking for recommendations on a certain theme? Hmm. I guess I always enjoy feminist themes, uh, social justice commentary. Is that a theme? I'm beginning to realize I'm a dumbass. Um, I'm gonna write like diverse uh, characters and experiences, if that makes sense. I feel like I wanna come back to that and <laughs> make it better. Anything else you want your bibliologist to know before they pick your books? The less men, the better. <laughs> But really, I don't really like reading from male authors usually, and I don't really like reading from the perspective of men usually. Yep, I'm gonna keep it with that. Okay, so then it asks you what kind of plan you want. So you can have them give you the recommendations and actually send you those recommendations, or you can just pay for the recommendations. I'm just gonna do that for now. Okay, so they give you a spot to include your Goodreads profile, which I am definitely going to do. I think if you're doing this, you should definitely do that. That way they can see what books you've already read. If you have a shelf of books that you didn't finish, or like I have a shelf of books that I hated, so they can base the recommendations on both books you liked and didn't like. Okay, so this is the profile. I think it asks some overlapping questions, but some new ones as well. So the first one, what are your all time favorite books? So I'll probably just do the same ones I did before, plus a few extra. Okay, so I included a bunch, pretty much every book that's on my favorite shelf on Goodreads. Any books you absolutely hated? I have a lot of those as well. Uh, it by Stephen King can suck it. Okay, added some on for that as well. I feel like since I attached my Goodreads, it's not as important that I fill these out because if they actually look at the Goodreads, I don't know how they do the recommendations, but they can see what books I gave like one and two stars. A few of your favorite TV shows or movies. All right, TV, uh, Criminal Minds, Law and Order, you new girl if they can find me a book that's like new girl that's like the romance of jess and nick i would die this one's kind of hard because a lot of the shows and movies i watch i don't really want to read books that are like them um i intake my media very differently i think you would say i know some people do enjoy reading sort of like trashy books and like guilty pleasure books I really don't, but I do like watching that sort of TV and movies, like just a good crappy Hallmark movie or like 
a trashy reality TV show, I love it, but I wouldn't want to read a book like that. Can I just say a general like true crime documentaries? Cause that's a lot of the shows and movies I watch. I'm just gonna leave it at that for now and maybe go back and add to it later. Any types of content you'd like your bibliologist to warn you about? I don't think so, but I like that they have that as an option. Any deal breakers? Hmm. I'm gonna say hate to love, even though I have enjoyed a few books that have that trope, but I mostly don't like it and I don't want someone else to pick it for me. I'm also gonna say like books longer than 350-ish <laughs> pages. Um, I really don't like reading long books. I'm also just gonna put like heavy sci-fi fantasy, even though I think you can tell that by uh, my responses and like my stuff on Goodreads, but just wanna make sure. And I think that's it. What is your preferred reading format? I don't think that really matters because they're not sending me the books. All right, so those are all the questions. I will come back to you guys when I get the recommendations. I'm very excited to see what they're gonna recommend. Um, like I said, I might go back on my profile, add a few more things in just so it's really fully filled out, but I will see you. I think it's gonna take like two weeks. I'm excited. Okay, ignore the echo that's probably happening. Ignore my barren room. I keep mentioning I'm moving. We're almost done. It'll be better in a few days, I'm sorry. I was gonna wait until I finished moving and was in my new place, but this email is just burning a hole in my inbox. I want to know what my recommendations are so badly. I'm really nervous that I'm not gonna be interested in reading these books at all, like off the bat. It's okay if I don't like them, but I hope I'm at least interested in them. There are a few questions I wanna answer by doing this. One, um, do I like the books, of course. Two, are the recommendations good? Because I feel like even if I don't like all of the books, I can still judge whether or not it's a good recommendation based on the answers I gave. Three, would I use this service again? And four, would I recommend you guys use this service? So hopefully we can answer all these questions by the end. Okay, I'm gonna open my email. I'm gonna try and cover some of it up. I think there's like a little introduction paragraph that I wanna read first before I see the recs. Okay, so it says, welcome to TBR. I'm delighted to be your bibliologist for this inaugural batch of book recommendations. After noodling on your, noodling, on your survey responses and your Goodreads shelves, I arrived at three picks that feature as few men as possible. <laughs> I love that, I'm glad they focused on that. Okay, so the first recommendation is Things We Lost in the Fire by Mariana Enriquez. I, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Um, I don't know if I've heard of this, I'll have to look at the cover. But it says, fun fact, if you say the words feminist horror three times in a row, Mariana Enriquez delivers a brand new short story collection. Oh, it's short stories. Each of these stories are different shades of dark gothic horror that play out on the streets of modern Argentina. Feminist themes and the inner lives of women feature into every story here, but the title story is a wild scream of female rage. You're kidding. I don't think I've heard of this before. The cover doesn't look familiar to me, but short horror stories based on feminine rage. I love that. And I'm glad it's based in Latin America. I'm guilty of not reading a lot out of like North America, so I'm happy about that recommendation. All right, the second one is Dare Me by Megan Abbott. That author name sounds familiar. No one, I repeat, no one does hard hitting contemporary fiction about young women like Megan Abbott. A lot of folks, many suffering from internalized misogyny, misogyny, <laughs> misogyny, look at this book, see that it's about cheerleaders and dismiss it, but the dark glittering twist in the story made my dang jaw drop. If you want female villains, read on. Okay. Okay, so this is a YA mystery. Um, just off like first glance, it doesn't necessarily look like something I would pick up, but the description the bibliologist gave interests me. And the last one is Ring Shout by, I'm gonna have to look up how to say their name, I'm sorry. I'll end with a horror recommendation that is more overt in its use of magic. I picked it for you because it's another social justice horror and it has fast become one of my favorite books of all time. Clark gives literal monstrous bodies to American racism and then pits, again, literal black girl magic against it. Maurice Boudreaux is great. Her magic sword is great. It's all great. I actually do recognize the cover. It's at the bottom of the letter. Okay, so this is a fantastical horror. Oh, it's a novella too. It's only 190 pages. It says it gives a supernatural twist to the KKK's reign of terror. This sounds good. Has anyone read this? No one I'm friends with or follow has read this. This sounds good. Okay, so my worry of not being interested in any of the recommendations was pointless. The first book and the third book super interest me. Um, Dare Me, I could kind of give or take. 
like I said earlier, the description that the bibliologist gave interests interest me more than the actual description on Goodreads. Uh, so we'll see about that one. So I will get back to you guys once I have collected all these books and started reading. My dog is here to join me today. I just picked up my books from the library. First, unrelated to this video, but I thought I would mention it anyway, because why not? Um, I got A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow. I've actually been listening to this on audiobook, but I feel like I keep zoning out during certain parts and then missing it. And the parts that I'm zoned in for, I'm really, really enjoying. So I thought I would pick up the physical copy. <laughs> Sorry, she's annoyed that people are out walking. Anyway, thought I would pick up the physical copy so I could be a little bit more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Annie! <laughs> a little bit more present while I'm reading. <laughs> Jesus Christ, girl! But I also grabbed Dare Me by Megan Abbott. This is the book I think I'm gonna like the least, so I wanna start with it. I also am gonna be starting the audiobook for Things We Set on Fire, Things We Lose in the Fire. It's just hand sanitizer. That book was like impossible to find at a library or on Scribd, except for the audiobook. And I really don't want to buy it. I've been buying a lot of books lately and I don't want to. Even though I did really want to try that book out physically, but we'll try the audiobook for now. And I guess we'll see. Like 30 pages in but I thought I would just give my quick thoughts so far. I am half loving, half really not liking the writing. Uh, it's strange. It's almost like very flowery but it doesn't make sense. She uses like a lot of metaphors and I'm just like but what does that really mean? Like she describes someone's long hair as being like a taffy pull but when I think of <laughs> like taffy being pulled I just think of like sticky stringy taffy so like is her hair nice or what but on the other hand I am sort of liking the more flowery I don't know if that's exactly how I would describe it I don't know it's just like a different style of writing so partially enjoying it even though as of right now I'm expecting to like this book the least I am still intrigued with where it's gonna go because I remember in the letter I got from the bibliologist um, she said like a lot of people might put this off seeing it's about cheerleaders but it's much more than that but as of right now it's really just been about cheerleading and um, we're following from one girl's perspective she is on a cheer team and they got a new coach and like each chapter has been like uh, it's like week two week one of tryouts football season um, and all yeah, everything that's happened really so far has been like about cheer practice. So like as of right now, it does really seem like it's mostly about cheer. So I'm just interested to see when that will change and where it will go. Okay, apologies. I kind of look like a mess. I have been putting off updating you guys because I'm kind of sad. I hate this book. Like, hate, hate this book. Like, haven't hated a book this much in a while hate this book. I'm DNFing it. I cannot continue. I will not let myself continue. I made it to about like the 60% mark just because I wanted to see when it was going to transition into a thriller, what the sort of like mystery element was. And I don't think this is the whole thing, but I found out like the start of it or a portion of it. And I just don't give a shit. Last time I checked in, I said I was like kind of enjoying the writing, kind of not. Took a swift decline. It is actually exhausting to read. I like flowery writing, but I feel like there has to be a good balance. You don't want, or at least I don't want, every single sentence to just be filled with like this intricate prose and metaphor. Sometimes I just want to <laughs> read a sentence that's like, she walked down the hallway. I don't want this whole thing about her, her wishbone legs and her girl figure and her glittery insides 
like just tell me she walked down the hallway you know what i mean it just made it actually so difficult to read i felt physically and mentally exhausted trying to get through it. I don't think I ever gave a synopsis, so we are following a girl who is on a cheerleading team. The team gets a new coach and the whole team kind of forms this really weird relationship with the coach, mostly the girl we're following though. I don't know, it was like too weird for me almost to get behind. Like the coach starts inviting the girls over to her house on Saturday nights and gives them alcohol and is hanging out with them, which is so weird and would never happen. And then Two of the girls walk in on the coach. Sorry, I'm giving spoilers. This book was published almost 10 years ago. So I feel like if you want to read it, you probably have already. And I wouldn't necessarily recommend it at this point. But two of the girls walk in on the coach having sex with another employee at the school. And then the main girl starts hanging out with them, like the coach and the person who she's having an affair with. And like, what in the fuck? Who would do that? When are two school employees hanging out with one of their students like at night and on the weekends and drinking alcohol with them it's just so weird and unbelievable i also just don't see like the feminist nature of this or what other people are getting out of it i saw some reviews that people who loved the book and were commenting on like the feminist nature of it and how this discusses like female sensuality and sexuality and female relationships and I just wasn't getting that. I don't know, like maybe I'm dumb and <laughs> it was too hard for me to pick up that through the difficult writing. I don't know. This reminds me a lot of Pretty Little Liars, like the relationships the girls have with each other and kind of like the catty popular girls um, involved in like a little mystery in this town. Remind me a lot of that. I really liked the Pretty Little Liars series when it came out. I think this came out around the same time. So like, Maybe that was a thing then, but I don't think I would like Pretty Little Liars now. And I'm definitely not liking this now. And the writing just makes it even worse. So for my own sanity, DNFing it. Probably the worst book I've read so far this year. And now, Things We Set in a Fire. I think I've read like four or five stories, which is about 40% of the way through the book. Also not liking this one. I think there were only two stories where it was kind of scary. I'm not really, again, like understanding them, understanding where the horror element is coming in, um, not seeing the like feminist themes that the bibliologist said were in here. I think all of the stories so far have been interesting, um, but not exactly what I was expecting out of the book and not exactly what I was hoping for when reading this. So I am going to continue in it, but at this point, not loving it. I'm so sad about how this is going so far. But today I'm gonna to be starting Ring Shout, which is the book I was most excited for out of the three. Um, I feel like this is the only one that I would have picked up on my own if I just saw like it talked about in a booktube video or on Instagram or something. I'm feeling a little discouraged, but we'll see how this one goes. Hopefully good. Hello. So I am really hoping to be able to wrap this video up today. So I'm halfway through my final two books. I don't think I gave a synopsis for Things We Lose in the Fire. I cannot remember the title of that book for the life of me, uh, but it's because I kind of can't. Like the stories aren't really connected. Like I don't really see a continuing theme between them. I guess they're all horror, but like I said, haven't really been scared or freaked out. And like I said, it doesn't really seem like there's a certain theme between them. Like they're not all focused around like paranormal things or I don't know. I <laughs> What am I saying right now? I feel like you guys get what I'm saying. They're not connected. The stories are all different short stories. I can't really give a synopsis. Still not super loving it, but still reading it. I'm also halfway through Ring Shout, which I'm really enjoying. I didn't know it was so short. Maybe I did when I originally found out about these books, but I didn't remember it being so short. It's under 200 pages, which is like a perfect book for me. And we are following a woman who is a monster hunter. Her and two other women go around and hunt monsters, but the monsters are members of the KKK. And as of right now, like we don't know their full story, like how these monsters have really come about. Did they just join the KKK to kind of like hide in that little group or did joining the KKK make them into monsters but it's a really interesting story it is sort of like historical fiction I think they're in I don't know the 1920s sometime in there and it's just really interesting so far I'm enjoying it it's definitely fantasy um obviously there are monsters there is like I guess other worlds I don't know 
it's hard to explain without spoiling anything, but it's definitely a fantasy book and I'm really liking it. There's also a female female romance. It's in the background. It's not a main part of the book, but I just enjoyed having it in there. And I'm really interested to see where this is going to go. So like I said, hoping to finish both of those books today, hoping I can come back and wrap up this video later. Okay, I know I'm looking a little bit rough right now, but honestly, I just want to wrap this video up. I feel like I've been filming it for a century and I don't feel like putting makeup on, so we can live. I have a note to add about a book I talked about previously. I have kind of bad news, I have good news, and then we're gonna talk about all the questions I wanted to answer by doing this process. So first, a note about Dare Me that I definitely wanted to include that I forgot to talk about. Super triggering book. If you struggle with um, your body image, eating disorders, uh, there is a sexual assaults sort of scene in here that I think is handled really, really poorly and spoken about really poorly. I would honestly just suggest avoiding this book. Usually I just give trigger warnings as a warning. Um, you can decide whether or not you feel comfortable going into it. Personally, I do not really struggle with body image. Um, I don't struggle with an eating disorder and parts of this were really difficult for me to read. So just like a big warning. But like I said, I honestly wouldn't recommend this book to anyone. Moving on to my kind of sad update, things we lost in the fire. I ended up DNFing about 30 minutes from the end, which I know is stupid. I told my boyfriend, he was like, you should just finish it. You're so close, just finish it. But like, I don't want to. It was just at that point that I realized like, I was just listening to something. I wasn't really enjoying any of the stories. Um, some of them were interesting but they weren't like scary. I didn't get the feminist themes that a lot of reviews say are in here. Some of them were a little creepy, but overall a very meh experience. I hate that I have two DNFs in this video, but I'm just allowing myself to DNF more books this year. I'm done with like forcing myself to finish books that I'm not 1000% enjoying and loving. This is a book I think I can see why some people would like it. it, just wasn't for me. I think it's a little bit too like literary fiction, read between the lines, and I don't want that right now. Now for Ring Show, I ended up giving this book four stars and I really really enjoyed it. I think I mentioned before I just love the concept of this book, it's different, it's interesting, and that's just something I'm really looking for in books nowadays. I really enjoyed the writing, I really enjoyed the characters, I really enjoyed the commentary behind everything, and I love just like how the story went along. I think everything made sense. It made me tear up. I think I've mentioned in like almost all of my videos lately, I've been wanting a book that will make me cry. And this made me tear up. Not full cry, but tear up. The only reason this didn't get a full five stars for me is because while I said I love that it was a short book, I think it could have benefited from being a little bit longer or just having less elements included. There were just so many things in this book, um, like the sort of otherworldly things that I wish I had more explanation for and just more like world building sort of. I think it really could have benefited benefited from like an extra 100 pages. It would still be a short book um, but I think that extra 100 pages or so of explanation world building would have been really good. All right so now let's talk about the questions I wanted to answer by doing this video. First, did I enjoy the books? Obviously, I didn't have the best experience. I enjoyed one out of three books. I DNF'd two out of three books, which is not good. So not a very good success rate. Uh, two, do I think these recommendations were good? So a little bit different, not based on my enjoyment of the book, but do I think these recommendations made sense for the questions I answered? Ring Shout, definitely yes. I see exactly why this was recommended to me based on my answers. Things We Lost in the Fire, yes. I can understand the recommendation, even though I didn't uh, grasp onto the things. How do I word this? I wasn't able to pick up on the themes that were the basis of this recommendation. Dare me? No, I'm lost. The recommendation is lost on me. I I really don't know why this rec was recommended to me. I'm guessing like the female villains because that was in the bibliologist little paragraph, but uh, I guess like I should have expanded upon what my idea of female villains are because the girls in here are not my idea of female villains. They're just like stereotypical catty bitchy teens and I don't like that. So my third question was would I do this again? Um, which is kind of hard to answer because I don't think I would have ever done this in the first place if not for a video idea. I don't really have trouble finding recommendations for myself. I'm on booktube and bookstagram all the time. Um, I'm always looking at Goodreads and Storygraph and new release lists. So 
Finding new recommendations isn't really hard for me. I only really did this in the first place because I think it's a fun video idea. So would I do it again for a video? Yes, 100%. I still think it's a fun video idea. I would actually love to do this again, um, change my answers a little bit, maybe look for more specific recommendations because I just think it's fun and interesting to watch. So would I just do this for my own personal use? No, but I would never do it in the first place. Would I do it again for a video? Yes. My last question was, do I think you should do this? Which again is kind of hard to answer because it's a personal thing. If you struggle finding new books for yourself, I would recommend it if you have extra $15 to spend. But I feel like if you are watching this video, you're on booktube, you're involved in the like book scene, um, you probably don't struggle finding that many recommendations for yourself. I do think this is a good idea if you want some books that are not as popular because two out of three of these books I had never heard of before this video and I like that there were less popular books included in my recommendations. So for that, sure. I think if you have the $15 to spend, um, it might be fun to do once or twice and see what kind of books you get. But ultimately, it's obviously up to you how you want to spend your money. So that is where we are going to end this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. It was a lot of fun to do, even though I only ended up liking one of the books. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.